Summer's here, it's getting hot. A lot of colleagues coming in the shop for AC problems. Uh, so what we're gonna do real quick here, show you guys a couple of different things you can look at that you might be able to solve uh, your problem yourself and uh, save you a little bit of money and keep you cool. Ryan here once again. Today we're going to talk about some uh, AC problems out here on the road. Simple things you can look at to diagnose your problems. These aren't real complicated systems for the most part. So like I said, I'm going to take you through, show you a different, couple different things here, show you some tools you might need uh, that'll help you find your problem. And uh, hopefully you can uh, solve the problem yourself and uh, get cool again. Okay, so if your air conditioning isn't working or it's gotten warm, uh, the first thing, the easiest thing to check for is for leaks. Most of them are going to be pretty visible. Most refrigerant people that companies put in or, or additives they put in will have like a dye, like a yellowish greenish dye that you'll be able to see uh, coming out. And, and obviously you'll see a wet spot uh, with dust stuck around it or, or physically dripping or whatever. So <clears throat> these are your, <clears throat> excuse me, AC lines here. This is a compressor, so you want to look around these lines here where they come in. The compressor itself, look around that for any leaks or, or wet spots. Check your lines. Up here is an expansion valve to where this it actually goes in to the truck to the evaporator coil. Evaporator coils can leak. Um, it's not as common as like a condenser up on the front of the truck, which I'll show you in a second. Um, usually if you got a condenser leaking, you're going to see it inside the cab of the truck or it's going to smell really weird or there's going to be stuff leaking out the bottom underneath your dash uh, from that refrigerant leaking out. So that's pretty much that area. And like I said, coming down, you have your dryer right here. Sometimes you can leak. This it's 2022 here. This dryer was made in 2012, so this is the original dryer. This dryer is like a, a filter, basically, dry, receiver dryer. If I'm gonna do a compressor job or something else and it's got the original dryer, I would re highly recommend changing that as well, just to throw that in with this. It's kind of hard to see on this truck, but if you follow these lines up forward here, condenser coils out on the front, it just looks like a little radiator almost. See a lot of those to where they'll get hit by a rock or something on the front, they're kind of fragile and uh, you'll develop a leak and, and those are usually pretty visible on the truck as well. So leaks are the first thing you want to check for. So every now and then I get a question about getting into heavy duty roadside service. I'd like to introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Full Bay. They build management software for commercial repair shops and they produce lots of free webinars, articles, and eBooks for people in this field. They've even got one for roadside service. It's called How to Start a Mobile Repair Shop. And while it's not on the same level as actual experience, it's gonna give you a head start in figuring out what life is like in, in this industry, what regulations apply to you, and what cost you can expect. So head over to fullbay.com forward slash Ryan for a free download or click the link in the video description below. Okay, so the second thing I'd look at, if you start the truck up and you've got the AC on and everything, I would check to make sure that your clutch is engaging on the compressor. I mean, this always, this belt's always gonna spin, but when it locks in, it's like an electromagnet in there where this, where this will lock and it actually spins the compressor. Um, I'll show you on a new compressor here exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is a new AC compressor. As you can see, I can spin it because it's, it's, it's an electromagnet, so it has to have power here, you know, over 12 volts to engage it. Once you have power to it, it's gonna turn, it's gonna lock in and then it, this, the center part's gonna be spinning. So obviously this is gonna be spinning all the time, even when the compressor's not on. But what you wanna look for on the front of the compressor is that it's locked in in the hole, everything's turning. So that's what I mean by checking to make sure your compressor's running. Okay, so the next thing I would look at would be uh, using a set of gauges, a manifold, or even some of the cheaper, like we use the refill uh, little poses with the clip couplers. Go ahead and hook your gauges up over here, which we're gonna do real quick. The bigger one's the high side. Make sure they're locked on good. And the smaller one, obviously, the blue one is your low side. And like I said, you don't have to have a fancy set, you know, like this. This one of the single refill ones would work just to check the, the pressure on the low side. So these gauges here, make sure everything's off. I got to spin this in to hit that Schrader valve in there. So right now I'm a little over 90 with the truck not running. Typically, I actually had this truck running yesterday with the gauges on it. And when the truck was running without the compressor engaged, it was running about 75 to 80, which that's what you want to see when the compressor is not kicked in. I mean, when the compressor is kicking in, 
this side is going to drop down, you know, 35, 30 to 40 PSI, and that's pretty normal. Um, one thing I'll throw in, like I said, oh, you got to fill up 30, 40 PSI. You never fill a system by pressure. You always want to fill it by volume. So like most trucks you're seeing out there with a sleeper on them, they're roughly four pounds of refrigerant. So that's how you want to use a scale with a tank and put in that amount of refrigerant, not filling it up to 40 because there could be a restriction in the system somewhere, the compressor's not working right, so you could overfill it or underfill it by going it by pressure. But to kind of tell if you've got a leak and you've got proper pressure when the compressor's not running, like I said, I hook up to it, the truck's running without the compressor on it, it's about 80 psi, so, I mean, this one was fine on that. Okay, so at this point, most people would start looking for fuse boxes and checking fuses and relays. I kind of deviate here and do something else to kind of roll out an electrical issue. So what I usually do when the truck is running, the AC's on high, everything's on like the way it's supposed to be, and you're noticing if that compressor is not kicking in, as we talked about, or locking in at clutch here, as we talked about, while the truck's running, careful of the belt and everything, use safety. I usually, a lot of times, I'll unplug the compressor first, then start the truck up and turn the AC and everything on. And you can unplug these. then you're gonna to wanna to use a uh, multimeter here. So we've got a standard regular multimeter, DC voltage, which it's not gonna show anything because I don't have the truck running right now because it'd be kind of loud to, to do this. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and probe. The polarity doesn't matter. You're gonna to wanna to stick these in those two pins, like so. And then on your on your multimeter, you, want to, you should have voltage there, 12 volts. I mean, if the truck's running, you're probably going to see 14 volts. So if you see 14 volts, you know right off the bat that you've got power. The truck, I mean, everything's working, the relays, the fuses, everything is telling this compressor to work, and it's obviously not working. So at that point, you pretty well know you've got a clutch problem or a compressor problem. This one actually has some wiring going into the compressor itself. Typically, some of these clutches, you can replace them, but there are like air gaps and stuff. So usually, and real precise, um, so if you don't do it exactly right, you can screw it up. So I typically just replace the whole compressor and clutch most nine times out of 10, because um, most of them are, they come that way anyways, and they're reasonably cheap. I mean, compressor's bad on this truck. We got voltage to it, and uh, the compressor is it's not running. So with, with voltage coming to the clutch and the compressor, I think that for this, this is a 13, 12 or 13 Cascadia, and everything looks to be original on it, but the uh, compressor was like 250 bucks, so with the clutch, so they're pretty reasonable. So now, if you don't have voltage here, and, uh, and, and you haven't found any problems that we've talked about up to this point, that's when I would probably start looking at my fuse box, uh, looking at checking the fuses for the HVAC system, relays, and all that stuff. Uh, check that stuff out first. And then you're going to want to start looking at your high-low pressure sensors. They're at various places on the truck. Um, so you're going to have two uh, high pressure, a low pressure sensor and a high pressure sensor. And both of those have set parameters where if the pressure is too low, it'll shut the AC system off. Or if it's too high, it'll shut the AC system off. So those are really uh, the main things you need to look at. So like I said, after you get to this point, if you don't have power here, fuses, relays, and then pressure sensors. One thing with a uh, high pressure, if you have a plugged up expansion valve or an evaporator or something, that can actually, actually create high pressure. So, I mean, you, I mean, you may have to replace an expansion valve or, can, or an evaporator coil as well. So that can be another, another problem also out there. But uh, that's pretty much the, how I diagnose these problems step by step. And um, usually we usually figure stuff out and don't have any issues and get them, get them cool and get them back on the road. All right, guys, so that pretty much covers it for today. Um, hope that helps you out if you're having these issues. Um, also, we uh, do a lot, of, a lot of other diagnostic uh, videos and how-to videos and all that good stuff. So if you're interested in that stuff, uh, check out the, uh, our other videos and playlists and um, hope it helps you out. Thanks for all the support, guys. We'll be putting out more as stuff comes into the shop here. Uh, when we find stuff, want to show you guys, we'll be putting more out as well. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates and like the video. So thanks for watching again. We'll see you next time.